If you don't know about Andorra, get to know, because they have a special story. A team that's been taken over by Gerard Piquet, sat bottom of La Liga 2 in Spain. And of course we can't be having that for Mr. Piquet, as today we turn him from player to manager. Or ex-player, of course, as here we are with Andorra, Piquet's team are going on the rise. And do you guys want kits like this one, this one, or even this one. If you do, make sure to check out Soccer Deal Shop, link in the description. Cheap and affordable replica kits, and if you use MWS in the promo code checkout, you get yourselves 10% off. As here he is coming into the club, we don't have face mods yet, they will be coming hopefully very shortly, as this is the team that he does get to start with, and I've got to say myself, Probably should be bottom of the league. As I am going to shuffle this, because when I scroll down, the reserves in this squad are honestly as good. As the first teamers look at the ratings, only 2 over 70, but that is okay. As one thing I'm going to do for season number one with Andorra, I'm going to keep the same formation, but I have shuffled around the players. And it's probably defence and midfield I want to strengthen with the 66 rated striker I'll let off. As that man up top, I was not trying to say his name, as 3 million euros, that's okay I guess. As we do have contracts to sign up for the younger players, and that's going to be difficult. We've got to get it done. Oh, there's actually no. Not many contracts to sign up. A lot of these players are, in fact, loan deals. As Lobete is, and the striker I can't pronounce. Now, that makes me think, do we just send them back? As, yeah, maybe a waste of money. It didn't cost much, but I just want to build this team how I want it to stay. And I thought them young players were going to be good for us. But if they're not permanent... They're not staying at the club. As believe it or not, these players are permanent. We're using PK's contacts to get some good players. As the first one of our signings, Pau Chabasi. Although we've sent strikers back, I am buying a defender. A big signing this man, although 64 rated, he is going straight in the team. Believe me. Knocking Massa out as this is PK's regen, 16 year old and coming from Barcelona as the second Barca player. That's right, we're getting two. This man took some convincing, but we've got it done. Welcome to the club. Well, I was going to introduce him, but for some reason right here, he's not popping off. As I'll have to show you through the squad hub, Mark Gooey. He's a striker from Barca, and he's only 17, this one. Maybe just a backup for season number one, but to have him in the team... Along with Chabasi, who's just beaten Rotherham in a pre-season game. And I think that's a good omen, beating a championship team. I'm a big fan of that. A huge fan, in fact, as we've only got 100k left. That is our spending done. As we're going to go into the La Liga 2 season straight away, as we start with Deportivo, don't know what to expect. But let's see, let's see. We've got to play away from home. As long as we're not bottom of the league, like halfway through the season, I'll feel completely fine. That is what we want, but we don't want to be losing games like we lose the first one. And so far, you know, with only two additions and what, five players scrapped that were out on loan? Or in on loan, of course, at us, Andorra. We are 10th in the league. That is not bad at all. Seems like PK in real life might want to take tips and jump into management instead of putting the money in? Well, he can do both, of course, as we need more money next season or at the end of this season if we want to get in them playoffs. As this is what's going on so far with the squad and some of the players are happy, which I completely understand. I mean, Kerbasi, look at him. What was he, 64 rated? He's gone up six. I think allende has gone up three. Moreno up front for us has gone up a bit, but as you can see on the bench, Gooey's taking over. Both Barca players doing brilliant so far, but they're not the highest rated. We've got Sergi Sampa and Christos Albanis. The Greek god, the second one, as he's got four goals, but our top scorer so far, Alex Calvo. And before we see the league position, we are at the end of the season. Not much more growth out of Gooey or Kubasi. You can see I'm definitely focused on those two players so far. I absolutely love them, and I think they're the future. As what about the immediate? 
immediate future for Andorra. We dropped off a little bit, finishing 12th in the league. Hey, we were stuck mid-table. I mean, clear of both 11th and 13th. If you give Andorra this in real life, I think they would take it. Seriously, PK, come on. Think about managing the club as where did we finish in the cups? I'm going to have a look-see. Ibar beat us in the Copa de España, round one, of course, and they are in our division. Maybe could have done a bit better. And get a bit of money, of course, through the Cups, as in the promotion playoff semi-finals. Those are your teams. Didn't expect us to be there, as we've got a lot of buying to do, as our Greek god Albanis is now our highest rated. And, well, something I read in the comments the other day about you guys telling me to try and make budgets realistic, that is something I want to do one day, but £11 million, I'm not shaking my head to. Or turning my head to, as we've got to rebuild this squad, because it's kind of looking unhappy. I didn't think it would be. And one thing I also noticed when we finished last time out is that half the squad is old and half the squad is young. Or should I say less than half the squad is kind of young. As Calvo's changed position, he's now a right midfielder. And these three right here, Calvo, Gui and Kabasi, they are my main men. Sorry, Bombardo, you're just in the middle. And that budget as well does have me thinking, could we win this league? I'm checking who's got relegated. Looks like Cadiz, Alaves, are Elche in the top division? I don't know. I need to get my Spanish knowledge up. As one thing I haven't touched on before we spend our money is the Youth Academy. And that's right, we're not using it. I know it's a good thing and I know it's used a lot in Spain, but our last few Spanish rebuilds have heavily been youth ones. That's not going to, of course, stop me from signing young players, but real players, as it's not stopping me from telling you guys, we are we're also on a journey to 25k before the 9th of May has a little bit of a swing to it. As another thing that has a swing to it is these players coming in. We've got four all through the door, all guaranteed as the first one's Joel Roker, who's a left-hand side of player and quite young. The only problem with him though, as he does look good, he can play both wings and he's only 19, is that his competition on the other hand is Calvo and Albanis, our two highest scorers from the last season. And to get the next few in, we are selling players as well, so we're spending a bit of money, but this is where it's coming from. That's right, we need to still raise funds despite our signings, and 11 million pounds or euros wasn't enough. As this one's a regen, Alberto Gutierrez, maybe, just maybe, a Carvajal? Of course, a bit of a weird one. A Carvajal region for PK on opposite teams in El Clasico as Manu Bueno from Sevilla. He's our next one, the luscious locked man. He's only 67 rated, but a young centre mid. As the final one right here, his wage cost a lot. He's only similar rated to the others, but 10 grand a week. For Antonio Gomez, a goalkeeper this time, a 21 year old, 71 rated. As this team right here, yes, it's not fully improved, but for the second tier, maybe a playoff push. You may think it's improved. You may actually not. But in terms of youth, it definitely has been. As all these old players, yes, yeah, still are at the club and mix them together. Please be a playoff push. As that's all I'm after. Just not mid-table this year. Definitely not relegation fighting as Valladolid is the start. Difficult start, I've got to say right here. But a draw out of Valladolid, yes, I will take that all day long. I do want a playoff fight. And I think Valladolid will be in the playoffs. So a good little tester against the team. I hope we play a game. And before we check where we are, in the Copa de España, we have made it past round one and we've got Villarreal's B team. A good omen, if you ask me, after beating, what is it, Racing for All? Could we go further? As could we also go further in the leagues as we are in the playoffs and Valladolid in the playoffs. I probably just butchered their name, but again, I do that all the time. And what did I call? I called both us teams being there. Good stuff, good stuff. But the team though, that ain't all good stuff, I've got to say. I know Gooey had an injury, a two-month broken toe, or maybe something different. I don't know. He was injured for a few months. So it's let Moreno's rating go up, and the injury, of course, means we've got him back now. 
can we do even better? As the squad's ratings overall are looking a lot better themselves. Even the regen, Gutierrez, phenomenal. Kubasi, the same. Albanis, the same as goal scoring so far. Moreno is on top. And to be fair, actually, can we still play 12 games? I thought it would have played less. He's only scored two. A little bit shameful, if you were to ask me. So we've still got four million pounds. How have we got that then? Oh, well, we've made a bit of money. We must have had around like 2.9 and Villanova apparently has gone to Oviedo. And if you think I'm just going to sit on that, you are mistaken. Of course, we're going to spend it and we're getting a left back for under four million pounds. And he's took a wage cut. Ayub Amarawi, who I think is from Morocco. And that pushes him in the team ahead of Pampin. Everyone over 70 rated, hopefully for a good end of season. And how's the second half gone? Well, okay, we have done well. We have done very well. As did we reach playoffs? Well, we didn't just do that. Andorra have gone from top to bottom. Or am I being stupid here? Yep, I'm being stupid. It's bottom to top. PK has done it. Winning La Liga 2. Is it La Liga Hypermotion this one? I might be wrong as we were out in the round of 32. We did get beat by Villarreal B as the playoff team's right there. No Valladolid. And now I can shut up about them. No need to focus on them as, ooh, ratings. I'm not too sure. I mean, we've got Amarawi who's gone up, what, three since he's been here? Alende hasn't moved and Jill hasn't moved. Similarly to that as well, Guiri's rating hasn't changed despite playing, what, four more games? And scoring 10 goals, getting assists? We must have battered teams in the second half of the season. As that's genuinely mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing. As our best player right here is, of course, a regen. Alberto Gutierrez, Danny Carvajal's regen. How fitting is it that BK's best player is a regen of a Real Madrid player? And I am hoping, praying, there are teams worse than us as we are gonna scour La Liga Hoping for worse! As there's Tenerife, Osasuna maybe, Espanyol, Mallorca, Vallecano, who? We're praying on a downfall. As we've got young players, we've got good young players, but the only problem is, some of them aren't ready yet. Moreno's not there yet, Rocker's not in the squad, we're still playing Albenis, who is getting pretty old. As improvements for signings, well it has to be Jill number one, then move on to Allende, then maybe Gooey. He could get replaced if he doesn't start scoring. He's got a 75 rating, but he doesn't play much. I don't think I'll understand that. Has got 33 million euros, that is. Uh, that isn't much. But to be fair in La Liga, every player has a release clause, so we could get more money if any of them get paid. And none of them have so far, but likes of Gutierrez and Kerbasi, they do have withstanding contracts, which we are going to sign up and sign them with big release clauses. Because if a club comes sniffing around, we must get the money. As let's spend this money. First player coming from Peru. Yes, we've gone quite niche. Justin Alarcon, I think that's how it's pronounced. And I think he is Peruvian. Good player, young player. He is Jill's replacement. But if it all goes south, we have got two players for our midfield. Our CDM Sampa is also getting pretty old. So we've signed for even more money. Carlos Baileba or Baileba, whatever it is, however it's pronounced, as we're going to get one of them into the team straight away. And I'm going with Alarcon because he is left footed and he's a little bit older. So I want him to increase. And I understand they're not 75 rated, still 74, but they're better than Jill. And this one's better than Albate or whatever our defender's called. I've even forgot his name as we're going for another regen in Gabin Blondel. Very happy with that one. Left foot. We can swap him and Kabasi around as I think the back five are sorted as they're quite young and have the potential to grow into better footballers. The midfield, however, well, we've already signed, of course, two replacements who will take over Sergi Sampa once he retires and then join Manu Bueno, who's approached by Inter. This is it. 
We've got to watch the contracts. I don't want to lose Bueno for, I think, 30 million. I'd rather lose him for 142 mil, which is his new release clause, as I think he's still got potential. Hence why I'm not letting go. As you saw his wage as well, it was quite mixed because we don't have much money left. In fact, only five euros to the pocket. Literally just a note. That's all that's left of PK's money. As our first game of the season, we've gone from playing their B team. It's Villarreal, the actual Villarreal. As despite the young players that we've gone ahead and signed, staying up, as you can see, may be an issue. And I've got to say, immediately after simming through, I've got to show you there's some good results here. A win against Barcelona, undefeated in a few games. The month before that, unbeaten in some of them. We may have underestimated ourselves right here as we're sat ninth in La Liga EA Sports. And that is literally a step away being seen when you click at the top of the table. And oh my, it's four points off. Real Betis in third. Could we sneak in there? Above the likes of Barcelona, which, hang on a minute, a 13th in the table. We are above Barcelona, as it currently stands. That is unbelievable, and sure should leave Gui and Kabasi quite happy. But they're not for some reason, and I don't get why, as Blondiel, again, we had another injury. As the defense, like I said, the ratings are going up, and Sampa, like I said, his isn't and that is because now the captain is getting old as Belaba we've trained as a CDM he's gonna replace him sorry Sergi Sampa as Calvo on that wing he looks amazing he is an OG it's Albanis now we've got to watch as he's 31 year old the Greek god could be overtaken by Rocker. As money wise, of course, we've got half a million, and I think it was two release clauses of players that were in our reserves. I don't know the names. I think it was Bova, maybe, as we're not spending that. And end of the season, we did slip off. We didn't get that third position, finishing 11th. As Tenerife, Espanyol, and Mallorca, though, I did mention we'd have to be better than those three teams. And that's exactly what we did as Barcelona did recover. They ended up in the Europa League. Why couldn't it have been us? As they also got through as well in the Copa de España and us on the other hand, we got smashed 6-2. That's by a team in the division below. And one thing that I noticed, which is actually quite funny, the board are disappointed with the Copa de España performance and basically that's PK arguing with himself as he's the manager of the team and he's the board man both parties he's playing it's a little bit weird as the team's a little bit weird as well on one hand i do like the defense that's still going strong the midfield's getting stronger just need belba playing and rocker i put of course in the team ahead of albanis as he's quite a younger player but we still could get a winger in but the main position i want to strengthen is Gui came from Barcelona and you can tell PK was a defender because he's not been good at scouting attacking players at all. Mark only got a 6.71 rating and nine goals in the league in 30 games. That is not good enough, especially when an OG in Alex Calvo is 82 rated and in only eight more games, he scored five more goals and honestly, I could see him staying for the future as this season in the division i'm quite interested what does pk expect from himself well it says in fact he wants european competition and the round of 16 which of course he's not got before out of these lads as we've named our two positions we want a striker and winger and that is probably all as the rest of the players like belba can still grow and we've got 56 million for just two positions. And as you can see, that is after contract. So a lot of money to spend and spending we shall do. And actually when scouting the players that I do want to scout, it's been a lot harder to find improvements on what we currently have. So that's required me actually selling what we currently have. We've sold Christos 
for 70 million pounds and that now gives us 68 which should be enough for just two positions 30 million each that sounds worthy as maybe that could actually change further however because you'll see what i've done here a big choice it had to be made and i've gone ahead and made it mark gooey is going for 70 million. So increase it again. We've got 131 million and we've spent 30 million right now. I'll show you it. Left with 101 as this man comes across from Brighton Hove Valbian to be with Belba. It is Simon Odingra. Fresh from winning, is it the AFCON award? Something like that. I'm happy to have him. He will improve despite being 24. I reckon 80. 82 rating of course and he's got some pace as now we need to pick it up to find a striker as with the 100 million we have i'm taking a gamble not a high rated player but one going into his prime and one i've not used before lois appender 95 million on an 86 rated call me crazy call me stupid call me absolutely bonkers but gooey just got bought from Dortmund for 70 million. So I don't think it's a bad thing, all things considered. We have downgraded the ratings of two players, or not upgraded them. 79's in the team, although PK expects European football, which we're going to try and deliver. As we start with Otosuna as well, a good first game. It should be a first one to build our confidence. Come on, lads, I want some European football. Belba's just the 80 rated that is as i don't believe it we've just improved our team we've got an 86 rated striker and we've got nilled by us as sooner okay and is our team a lot better we are second in la liga that's right second in La Liga. This is really good, but I'm actually not getting ahead of myself. And yes, we still could win the competition. But A, I'm looking at Real Madrid with only zero defeats. Bloody zero. Unbeaten. And B, I know what happened last year in this table. Barcelona finished above us. And they're behind us sneakily. I know we can get caught. I will settle for Europa League. But the team looking at it... That tells me otherwise. Not much growth out of Calvo and actually Belabor, but the rest of the boys I'm very excited about. There's some brilliant ratings, including Gutierrez, of course. Danny Calvajal's regen has surpassed the real player. Hopender as well for a 26-year-old signing. He's done phenomenally. Blondiel is, as he's, of course, a regen. And Lois Appender with 14 goals in 18 games. 22 goal contributions in only 18. Last time out, Guiri at this stage had about two goals. As end of this year, we have it right here. We did finish well. Top of La Liga. Controversially enough, though, we won't have a trophy as everything was level, including the goal difference. As I'm not getting too disheartened, I know it's very close, but you can see they score more goals. I'm going to give it to Real. Just means next season we've got to go all guns blazing as PK is not going to take that very nicely on the chin. Being the next Barca player, Sevilla knocked us out in the Copa de España. That's quite disappointing. Round of 32 again, as I'm just looking at the Champions League, because I know we're in it next year. And is our squad good enough? Let's have a look at the rating, shall we? We haven't lost anyone. Honestly, that's a bigger surprise than any of the ratings. As, as you saw with Bueno's contract, there is release clauses. Sure, they might be a bit high, but still, they exist. As good players exist here as well, I must say. I am so shocked, so stunned. Man City hasn't paid one. Seriously, though, why doesn't Pep Guardiola want one of our players? The likes of a Pender, a Dingra, and Calvo are 84. That is quite good. And I was thinking about scrapping him at the end of the season anyway. Him being an OG, however, probably gets him staying in. And we've got weaker players like Belba. And of course... The bench, which is priority number one next year. 
And in this season, which we're gonna try and make, well, the last season, with 230 million euros, that is, that is an astronomical figure. And honestly, Andorra, we've gotta do business with that. As I was thinking about the bench next year, that's not the priority. The priority is the team and really world-class players. As despite Belaber's rating, I'm in no rush to sign a replacement because there's him and, of course, on the bench is Sergi Sampa, who, to be fair to him, hats off. He's kept up with the ratings as bench could be improved. We could do with a few players. Maybe spend around 100 mil on one player, then the rest can go on the bench make sure we stand a chance at not only the La Liga title, not only that, we want to win the Champions League if we can. There's five million on contracts, that is completely fine by me. We've still got a lot of money to go, so let's get it spent. As let's get down to business. The first thing I've got to say is I retract my comments about keeping Calvo in the team anyway, because he's going to be knocked out. We have Mohamed Kudos from West Ham. Want to see him pulling out the iconic celebration, sat at the side of the stand, arms out or wide, all hand on the chin as the next player is Adeline. Wanted to make that rhyme? Kind of did. As the players you're seeing now are just them bench players. They're costing under 10 million. Enzo Cornelius. With also coming in Thomas Aviles. As to be fair, the bench, it looks like it's complete. We've got players off there. Still, we lack a striker. But in the team, of course, only one replacement so far. Mohamed Kodos. I love you, man. As the next player right here, we've gone ahead and spent £40 million on Felix Afigian. A brilliant rating for a backup man. Our bench is very strong. And I've got to say as well, we've took some good Afghan players, such as Amar Marawi, Adingra, and Baleba. Not to mention Kudus and the striker we brought in. As no, we're not done just yet. As the final signing, one I've made quite a few times, Bruno Fernandes is Andorran. Is that term really used correctly, of course? Andorra? Andorran? I think that's what you say about the country. As never mind anyway, it doesn't really matter as can he take the place of Belabor in the team? I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna move Alacon into centre mid. And that is our squad. Very strong, very built, and still 20 million, which we aren't going to spend at least not in this window. As a more interesting fact, though, than just the money that we've got saved left over, we start with Barcelona, which, of course, we've took players from, and is PK's old team. Can we get a result? Oh, my days! Yes, we do! That is fine and dandy. PK doing it against his former club, but our Champions League group. I'm a bit pessimistic. Monaco and Rakow, but Porto are in there, who we know we hate facing. And halfway through the season, which we're hoping is the final one, we are third in the league. Barca and Real Madrid on top, which of course I'm a little bit irked by, you know. I would have hoped we were up there. Still, we've got the opportunity. Give it a few more seasons and we should be up there as I saw Porto first and I got really worried for a minute. Yes, we've got Man City. I know I saw it, but just beating Porto in the group is enough. We did top the group as well. It's worth saying that whilst we're looking at it. But honestly, though, I can't believe that. Lazio beating City to top of the group, and I would have rather finished second where bloody Porto finished. Conciao, is that the Porto manager? Step ahead of PK as this team. There's a little bit of a shock in here. Kudus, who I thought would do well, isn't actually playing. It is instead playing the OG Calvo on the wing. So I'm not going to stop the game. I'll put Calvo back in, but he needs to promise us he will live up to it. As we want to go far in the Champions League this year and the ratings of the players suggest we could. As Manchester City at the Etihad. Wow, what a game. If you're going to win the Champions League, you win this fixture. Whether it's in the group stage, the final, whichever it is. And a draw, you know. 2-2 two, two ain't that bad. Just need to go again. Come on, Andorra. PK's magic. He has a mastermind. And what a display it is as we're through in the next round. But I see Porto 
I don't want to face them. Come on, just avoid them. And oh my days, they've got beat by Lazio. It could have been them. But instead of facing them, they must have got beat in the second leg as hang about. Let's see what beating us. As come on now, we've got to do this. We've got to come back and upend a man. He is the god up front. I think that was a hat trick from him as we're through to the next round. But honestly, now every team looks good. No one I want to play. No one I don't want to. As Juventus, we've drawn. Mm, there was tougher, as it's a team we always face in the semi-finals. And first leg to draw, thank you, Bruno. This still is worrying, though. We haven't got the job done. And all my days are pender in extra time. He saves us from embarrassment over in Juventus. And wait, no, what's the stadium called? I'm being so stupid. That's gonna bug me. The Allianz, the Allianz, that's the name of the stadium as Dortmund beat Paris. No Paris handed out by Paris right there. And that was a weird thing to say. Anyway, we're gonna put Kudus back in. That's the only change as we can't put Beleba in. We've got to play it down here, don't we? Yes, Adeline, you go in. As that's gonna be the team for the Champions League final. Of course, it's gonna be fitter and we've got to beat BVB. As simming all the way to the end of the season, though, we still wanted to perform in La Liga, of course, which we haven't really done. Champions League football next year, though, and a Supercopa won. That is right. At the first time of asking, beating Real on penalties. Not all fine and dandy, though. Lost in the round of 16 to Atleti in the Copa. But honestly, to get another trophy, to make it two so far is enough for me, but there's still one more to go. As Benfica's stadium, if there's two things about Portugal that I've learned from career mode, it's these two facts. If you play Porto in the Champions League, you will be beaten, but if you play at Benfica, you usually win. Oh my days as well, and I've just realised as we tackle him right there, Matt Gooey plays for BVB. The striker we sold were against the team he plays for as Appenders found a gap, and what a save, Kobo. Brilliant from their keeper and captain at the same time. Agate, though. Okay, Dortmund's come to play. I mean, after all, they did beat Paris Saint-Germain, but we've got to get on top. The players we have are worthy, and kudos with a run. Opender's in the middle. Kudos to keep on going, and it's him to strike through, Kobo. Keeper should have done better. He did beforehand, but Mohamed Kodos, 1-0, and Dora. Just ran straight through, and he didn't do the celebration, man. He blasted it through the gloves. The keeper has to save that. And I think it was recently for West Ham, he scored a goal where he ran the length of the field. Almost the same thing, but in the Champions League final. For PK, for the PK. That is a brilliant tackle right there. As Alakon to run. Oh, Kudos was almost through. That could have been brilliant, but now he's got the overlap. Gutierrez with the run. Dink that into a pender who gets his knee on it. A pender's round his man, and that's a brilliant save, Kobel. He's redeemed himself a bit there, but still we batter on, and Gutierrez running through. That is handball from Christiansen. Penalty Andorra. First time we've got one of these in a while, as it definitely struck the hand. It looks like you were bloody catching it. As come on, Manu Bueno, our midfield maestro. Can he make it 2 0? Yes! He does. A brilliant scoreline. We just need to keep it up as that's gooey through. And what was our keeper doing? Honestly, Antonio Gomez, have you been paid right there? Dived out of the way for the X player to score. An action-packed half, which isn't over yet, you know. It's BVB who have just woken up. But Bruno's got the tackle in and there's the halftime whistle. Well... Interesting end to a very rapid half. As we've got to stop Dortmund's domination, and that is a way to do it. Brilliant pass through to a pender. This should be three, and it is three, you know. And number nine, who we recently brought to the club, getting the goal, which gives us a two-point gap again, or two-point lead, or two-goal lead. There's no points in the Champions League. As we're looking good again now, we are utterly dominating the game. Even our left back getting forward. 
A Pender still running. We're going to dink that into him. Header over the keeper and it almost went in. Coble light on his feet. And Dortmund look out of this. We're honestly all over them. But Byro Gittens there. And that's going to be a penalty. What a stupid tackle. It's our Peruvian Alarcon. He just lunged in. Nowhere near the ball. Had to try and stop them. As Gooey against his former club. He's got a brace now. And he's carrying Dortmund. As this final livens up now. Terrible tackle from one of our own players. And Adam is running through. Oh, but Blondiel, he's got back and done his defensive duties. Kabasi just whack that. We've even won the header and we could go again. A pender with the ball. But man, what is he doing? Giving them a counter attack. As Buenos took his man out at the expense of a free kick. And Gooey, well... Not getting a hat trick with that thing. Terrible shot from him as we've not got long left now. There's a good ball through there. Onto a pender. We could have another one, but why? Why has he passed that across the field when there was a man in the middle? But it doesn't matter, you know, because the whistle has gone. And my friends, you know what that means. It means that Andorra have wrapped this up. Three trophies in the bag. As before this camera dies, we've got to watch the trophy lift. It's going to be Kubasi or Kubasi, our first signing. PK's regen gets to lift the trophy in honour of Gerard himself. What a wonderful career. From player to owner to manager to UCL winner. And if you want to see this done again, Comment a team down below.